Okay, we are operational. <laughs> good morning, Jennifer. And good morning, James. And good morning, Super. Okay, so um, good morning, everyone. And I think we're, this is the point where we're realizing that we're doing this, um, you know, pretty regularly, mm -hmm. right? Because we're starting to realize that maybe there is a um, a group out there who can benefit from this. Yeah. And so, actually, this is nothing different from what we sort of do every day. The talks that we have every day is some sort of like this. It's not. It's not like we're doing something very different, right? Right. Because these conversations go on all the time. I have them with you, Jennifer. I'm sure, you, Jennifer, you have it with the other team members that we work with. I have these conversations a lot with different um, supers in the industry. And uh, I talk to managers a lot, building managers. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, these conversations always come up. So it's it, we're actually just um, trying to bring bring the good parts of it to you guys to see if um, it can help at all because it helps me if I'm able to talk through a problem that I'm having in this industry while I'm working everyday problems like you know this problem occurred and and how do I solve it I don't solve it by myself I solve it with the help of others by discussing it and trying to find a solution so it's and, and because we're supers are often lone wolves that operate by themselves um, it's great to be able to create just a network of uh, supers to, you know, to talk together and to connect with. Connect, yeah, with. Yeah, and it's. I think it's important to to get it out there, get right. these discussions out there, and share. And as you said, as you mentioned, there are a lot of supers who are alone right and we want uh, it, at some point they might think uh, you might have experienced too like, am I going in the right direction right into the right direction uh, am I growing am I learning something new uh, it could be hard <laughs> it, it could is. be hard because you're alone yeah um, but you know we you feel I, like you're alone yeah and I hope these these series, podcast series, or YouTube video series, will will help help those supers. Um, first of all, not feeling that they're not alone, right. and there are a lot of supers out there, um, and people from the this industry who have who probably have the same same concerns, and concerns, problems, they encounter the same yeah issues. issues. And <clears throat> you know what? Like, <clears throat> if you need someone to talk to or ask some of the questions, feel free to reach out, and we would love to talk about it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and yeah, you're right. This may not be like a very creative uh, discussions. Uh, it's everyday, everyday talk. And conversations that I think it's fun have. and creative. <laughs> <laughs> in in a way, I guess it, um, it, it can be. You you do have to be creative, and uh, I think. Um, but I know what you mean. It's not a. I mean, it's not I, a. It's the, not a fun, exciting topic. Uh, you no, know, no, like, no, no. That's like not actually. That's not well, what I, I meant. Say that. I I yeah, think, I think it's, it's no. I think it's really exciting. I think it's super fun to talk about these things. I'm not saying that we are, we are not, uh, you and I are not coming up with something Thanks, that's... Jennifer. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm boring. <laughs> no, I, well, like, these are not right, right. completely new topics. Please, James, right, listen right. to me. Okay. <laughs> oh, please. <laughs> I, I know what you mean. Yeah, <laughs> it's, but, yeah, it's, oh, you lost me here. Right. I mean, I think it's super creative to, to just bring it out there and talk about and share with everyone um, perhaps supers in New York City um, 
other cities, maybe all over U.S. I heard there were supers in England. Are there? Oh, I guess so. I guess every uh, metropolitan area that has uh, you know smaller buildings um, may experience this. I mean, I, I yeah, you're right. Yeah. So. So yeah. I mean, I, I think what you're trying to say is that the network is broader than you think. There, yeah. there's the industry is broader than you think. There's and, people everywhere. And there Great are, supers. They're all alone. <laughs> a lot of them are alone, right. unless you have a staff. So I hope these series brings uh, all these people together and yeah. create some sort of network and or just to talk about these things and get it out there and yeah. record it and share with other people. <clears throat> yeah, I hope this really helps. One, one good thing about um, no matter how, <clears throat> you know, no matter how alone uh, a super may feel out there or someone in this industry, um, if, they, if they're wondering uh, if they've made a mistake, I've made that mistake too. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that, yeah you're I, not alone. I've made that mistake probably more than once. <laughs> and if I make the same mistake once, it's okay. If I make it twice, shame on me. So it's great to be able to share that. I mean, every day when I talk to um, supers in the industry, I, I, I love to talk about this. It's, because um, it's great to be able to talk about my experiences and also be able to help them not make the same mistakes. Mm -hmm. Because most people um, are smart enough to not make the mistake by listening to someone else versus <laughs> I need to make that mistake in order to make it stick in my head. Right. Ooh, I don't want to do that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't oh, want to be in that situation. <laughs> right, right. And just look at me as a, as a cautionary tale. Yeah. <laughs> and then you can say, oh boy, that, you know, he made that mistake and now I know what not to do. Yeah. So we want to, I want to actually talk about um, a topic today. Um, you know, some, a lot of those mistakes that I made was when I was talking to customers. You know, I've been on, wow, a, countless interviews, just countless, countless interviews. I can't, I mean, for the past several years, I mean, for the past decade, I mean, I've just been all over uh, New York City all different boroughs having all sorts of interviews mm -hmm. and I've flunked a lot of them you know <laughs> so what happened was in the beginning I had no idea why I flunked I was like why did I not why did they not pick me why was I not um, a, an ideal candidate for them mm -hmm. the perfect candidate and um, you know I mean it, it, it doesn't feel good <laughs> right not to, to, to go through that so after a period of, you know, mulling in depression after not getting it, which is okay, you come out of it and you say, let me try to figure out, let me try something differently next mm -hmm. time. Let me try to figure out what I missed. Um, the other things are, let me try to read up on this and see what I did wrong. Because there's so many great books out there. Um, and eventually I touched salesmen, you know, sales processes. Right. I touched like how to improve your inner workings, <laughs> how, to, how to, you know, how right, to self-help books, self-help books, how to get over a no, you know? So I went through all of that stuff. I, you know, I read countless books and I questioned a lot of um, people. I started to question uh, managers um, of all different management companies, um, all different levels. I questioned our customers, board members, and I started to ask the questions, um, and I'm still refining it, I'm, but I started to ask the questions of, you know, what, um, what are the things most important to you? Mm -hmm. And I also started to listen when I asked that question, to allow them to speak to me, to talk to me. And it was, these are rare moments where you can hear what the problems are from the customer themselves, and they'll tell you. 
and it was great to get that. So after doing like probably hundreds of interviews um, where I, you know, asked questions, I started to ask better and more uh, effective questions. I started to get the answers that I was looking for. Mm -hmm. And I started to understand why I was flunking on a lot of these interviews. And as I get gradually got better with that, I started to make a list of those things that um, was, you know, I started to make a list of those things that were important to the customer, <coughs> the mm. building owner, whether okay. it's a property manager or board member. Awesome. But this is still an ongoing process, right? Oh, totally. I mean, I, I haven't gotten the answer. And uh, I think if there is everyone in this, everyone knows that there's no silver bullet mm -hmm. to get over all of the objections and challenges of your customer. There's no silver bullet, or right? there's no magic formula, but um, you're always going to have to refine them because not only do um, situations change, um, but people change over time. The, the customers that we have um, that are six years old are very are different from the customers that we have that are that we're dealing that we're working with that are 30, 40, 30 to forty years old. You always have to refine your uh, profile of the customer. This persona. This persona. So it's like your ideal customer. It's like Hollywood actors. You do. They do tons and tons of auditions, and I think what you're trying to say is that depending depending on the movie or script you have to give different <laughs> right, right. different kind of um character oh. that suits yeah that could work too suits the audition right 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 so you're you're using profile as a persona like your persona when you present to the customer yeah. like you want to be their solution so you're gonna fit your adapt yourself to kind of match theirs yeah. to what they want and it can be different. Someone might want A, someone might want B. Right. Then maybe you could be flexible. Yeah, so what you're hitting a, a uh, yeah, another level of how to approach um, like sales, sale, the sales process mm -hmm. is that there's a point where if you, if you study what you're doing, if you look carefully at the mistakes that you've made and you learn from them, and you constantly improve your processes, you're, you're going to be, you're going to develop uh, the skill to adapt to what your customer needs. Right. Because you've already, you already know what their problems are and you know how to approach that. Mm -hmm. You're better able to um, navigate, navigate that, yeah, that interview and right. know how to kind of switch from, um, uh, yeah, side to side. Side or... to side to answer their questions and right. concerns. But again, it, it's only the first step, listening to your customer and being able to come up with solutions for them is the first step. Right. So I thought maybe we could do this today uh, for, this, for this episode is just talk about um, this list of the top 10 things that um, the customer's um, of part-time buildings, what they're looking for. I want to say that in, in my experience of having gone through these interviews, I've filtered it down to this list. So uh, one is uh, consistent pricing. Pricing is always an issue. Money, how much you're going to cost. Mm -hmm. Predictable pricing. Um, number that's number two. No, that's number one. I okay. said consistent pricing, con, okay. uh, predictable pricing, which means that they want to be able to predict your your cost okay. over the year and as a part of the budget. Cons um, competence, your technical know how, so your 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 skill. Okay, okay. number three. Um, communication. Mm, number four. Um, uh, your. Uh, a take charge person. You're you're kind of you have a self initiative. Okay, number five. Uh, your attitude. Number six. Uh, availability when you're available. Number seven. Uh, being organized. 
and uh, being able to uh, keep records. And number eight. Number eight is trustworthiness. Number nine. Reliable and consistent service. And number ten. And number ten is, um, you know, I, I I think that it was actually um, predictable pricing. Sorry. Okay, so it's number nine. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> you have top nine things that are very important. Top nine things or top ten, if you can split that last one. Okay. <laughs> but uh, because they but, are different, actually. Okay, but I think um, this is not only for part-time supers. This could be for any super. Yeah, it could be for any super. Can we? Can can you read through the list real quick? Yeah. So. Uh, one is a consistent pricing and predictable pricing is um, they want to make sure it's predictable so that there's no ch there's no charges that come out of the come out of left field that surprises them mm -hmm. you know, because you're no matter how good you are um, and how you know you got all the things right if you're too expensive for them you're automatically out of that picture mm. competence technical knowledge is you're just what they're going to check whether you know how to do certain things, whether you know how to fix things, you know, plumbing, electrical, all the, the, the things in the trade that's needed in the building, all those skills that's needed in the building, whether you know the boiler, um, heating, hot, you know, how to troubleshoot. Um, a lot of uh, part-time buildings now uh, want someone that communicates well, um, especially if you come, if you, going to go beyond the porter position they want to know that you're able to communicate doesn't mean that you have to speak you know perfect english or you have to write like um you know a novelist but they just want to know they just want to be able to get from you the important information about the building without second guessing right uh they want this is a a big one that a lot of uh, managers want it. This is this may be a a manager special um, item. It's taking the initiative, being an independent thinker. Um, so a lot of managers, building managers, are so busy with their own things, um, with all of the stuff in their plate, uh, and often they're juggling so many other buildings that they really count on the super to be proactive. Right. So they they want to make sure that that this the person that they're hiring as a part time super, or full time super, whatever it is, is able to proactively head off problems before it becomes a manager's problems. So the manager doesn't want any problems that uh, it doesn't want to get any problems that have snowballed because uh, the super neglected his job or right. didn't tell him anything. So this is a this is a a big thing with um, with building managers. Building, building board members, not so much because usually board members are in the building and they're, they're able to, to, you know, they, they find they're, they're close enough to the property and intimate enough to the property, uh, with the property enough that um, they, they may be that extra voice or extra pair of eyes or, you know, they, they may not need that proactivity. But... Um, for building manager, it always almost always comes up, so uh, that's a main point that you want to consider. What could be an example of this? Proactivity. Mm -hmm. Oh, um, proactivity. Actually, I, I it came up recently where uh, a ma a building manager of a big uh, management company um, had asked me if I can provide or connect her with a with a super, it was a full-time position mm -hmm. um, because th the super there was not finding the thing, like letting her know of things that are stored in the, in the stairwell. Oh, so whenever she went there, she encountered all these, all these things being stored, garbage bags, bikes, and she was upset because it's a fire hazard. Yeah. It looks, it looks um, unkempt and disorganized and other uh, uh, people in the building were complaining and so when she went there she asked the super why didn't you tell me and uh, he kind of made I guess he gave her the impression that 
you know, he didn't really um, know that that was, that was a problem. And I guess whether he knew it was a problem or whether he didn't know it was a problem, he just didn't let her know. And I think what she was looking for was someone to be proactive and to say, look, there's stuff being stored. Maybe he didn't want the, the headache of having to deal with that, that resident who's putting stuff out there because sometimes they get upset and he just didn't want to create trouble. But at least she expected him to tell her so that she could, she could be the um, bad, bad cop and tell that resident. Yeah, I think the super could have asked, if, even if he didn't know. Um, I think we're supposed to keep the, keep the hallways right. um, clean or without any kind of the personal items right. outside. Is this okay? You know, yep. Super could have asked, yep. right? Yep. Um, he could have sensed so sensed these things. So being proactive means like noticing things inside the building. Perhaps um, that could be problematic, yep. or seems like an issue, or just just tell, telling the manager there's something different. Yeah. Um, um, or any changes. And it could be communication, but it could also be taking action right away. Mm -hmm. A, I'm sure, you, I'm, I think you've, you've probably um, heard this before, but uh, s seeing that the light bulbs are blown, mm -hmm. are no longer working, and then they're not changed for a long time yes. until someone says that. Yeah, it's, set, yeah, so. Points that out. You don't want a super who says, oh, you never told me to do that. Right, right. <laughs> I, I, no one told me to do that. Yeah. Yeah, I wasn't asked to do that, but I get it. Okay. That is interesting because sometimes supers feel that they're not giving enough freedom to make those decisions. So they feel like they're in the chain of command, but they mistake that for not, not moving to get important things done. Like critical things done. So, uh, part-time supers, definitely RMs, have to take charge and be able to be proactive. If you find something that's not right, you act upon it. Yeah, it's better to bother the management with a lot of a lot of alerts, right? Rather than just not doing anything because you're going to seem like you're lazy. Yeah, yeah. Until the manager tells you, stop calling me for every yeah, exactly. little thing. <laughs> it's much better. It's much better. Yeah, yeah. Um, and more information is better than less information. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. right. um, the other thing I have here is a lot of people say, attitude. What does attitude have to do with it? And uh, believe it or not, a lot of people want to work with someone that they can work with comfortably. So they want to feel comfortable with the person that they are working with yeah and, and they want to feel that they want to feel that they want to work th that you can work together right and i don't think this is a hard or difficult one just smile <laughs> <laughs> and just smile and, and say and listen a little bit and <laughs> you know what you're you're reminding me of there's a great book out there called um how to uh, make friends and influence people, if I got that correctly, by um, Dale Carnegie. It's one of oh, yeah. the, f the I best, uh, seriously, one of the best books out there. Um, I read it uh, when I was in high school, um, and it, it, was, it was like written back, like, I don't know, a long time ago. A long time, decades ago. I think, yeah, I think more than that. And it's still like a bestseller now, and it's still the principles, the, the concepts in there still relate to, to modern times. Yeah, but we're human beings. We were human beings back then, and right. we're still human beings. Right, right. So, uh, by the way, I'm, I'm just going to get this list back up. But it's, it's, um, there's, it, it's, it's amazing how um, supers don't see that that's, a big part of their of of customer service. That is a huge part, I right. think. Right, and I wish there was a, a better way to, um, a, or a better episode to help. You know, educate uh, part-time supers and and people in this industry and how important that is because well, we it can, can. We can have a separate episode on that. 
So there's so many things that you can do that gets misinterpreted, and then that person can take it as something that's you know harmful or um, offensive. I'm sorry, not harmful, but offensive to them. Yeah. And so being smiling and saying hello and you know calling people by their first name and treating them respectfully or even just saying hello and smiling just speaks volumes oh yeah i've had many experiences where people um may judge me that i always look angry or i sound angry right maybe a lot of people who's listening to this might think that way because i've got a loud voice <laughs> um, and my, <laughs> I don't know, maybe it's my personality, but I come off as kind of strong. Right. I don't know, maybe it's my, uh, how, how I speak, or also maybe. my voice. But maybe Dale Carnegie can help you if you read the book, How <laughs> to Make Friends and Influence book. People. You gotta read it again. It's, <laughs> it's actually one of those books, I say right now, w w probably if there was one book in the world that I would hold on to, is probably this book just because it has so many awesome awesome pr concepts in there of course it's i mean there's so many books out there that's great but if you haven't read this it's a classic it's a classic and i i reread it time and time again because they come out with different editions mm -hmm. so when i read it again i not only refresh my memory on on what the lessons were but i learn more there's more stuff <coughs> more things that uh come out mm -hmm. but good having a right attitude it's, it's so important right if you if you um just come into the meeting with a big smile and yeah, you know pre-pandemic if you give a handshake no hugs but a handshake a firm handshake that conveys a a, a, a huge thing um, a huge confidence to the uh to the customer you mentioned first names but i think in the last few episodes, I think you mentioned calling them by sir or Mr. Oh, I do. But it depends. I mean, it, it really depends, but it depends upon right? what yeah. they, some people don't want to be called sir. Some people call me Mr. Park and I'm like, please don't call me that. <laughs> I say James is fine. Any, any version of James, Jim, Jimbo, John even is okay, but not Mr. Park because that's, that's okay, like my so dad. Okay, so that would depend. Not that my dad's a, yeah, but so, yeah. I see, okay. And a big smile. Big um, smile. Just friendly, being friendly. Be friendly. They want to see that you're a person, once again, the, the main thing, the reason is they don't want to be your friend. Mm -hmm. And Being a friend versus being friendly, they're different things. They're, they're different things, yeah. And they, what they want to see is whether they're able to work with you. Mm -hmm. They want to see if, they can work with you when things get hard, and whether you, or whether you're a jerk, you know, or you have a you have an attitude that turns them off. Mm -hmm. That's what they're looking for, to them. And you may not be a jerk, but you can convey that. And then once you do that, that may not determine whether you get the job or not, but it'll definitely influence it. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, and also <clears throat> um, don't react right away to an offensive question or comment <laughs> i've yeah. done that before <laughs> just um sometimes what i use to control this is that just think of the other person as babies or yeah. like a five-year-old right you know when a five-year-old says you know you you are stupid or you you're uh I don't know, some, something very offensive, I guess, bad about you. Oh, you I hate you. Yeah, I hate you. You're, you suck, or something like that, maybe, you know? Yeah. Or, yeah, whatever that comment, comment is, you don't, you don't get angry to, uh, you might, but you don't get that upset to a five-year-old saying, I hate you, or I think you're stupid. No, you don't. Because they're babies. You, right. <laughs> because they're, they're babies. Because they're kids and they don't, they, they reacted probably out of emotions and they didn't, you know. So what you're saying is. Think of them as babies, big babies, <laughs> adult babies. So in the interview, if you're offended, because then you could come off 
if you make the wrong moves, you could come off as having a bad attitude. Right, right. so what do you do? If that happens to me, um, I'm trying to think of what, what the offense remark, offensive remark is, but let's say they say, well, that's because, that's because you're, you, you don't know how to do something. Yeah. That's because you're inexperienced, right? And immediately I'm like, inside I'm like, what are you talking about? I, <laughs> who I've do done you think this. you are? <laughs> yeah, who do you think you are? Uh, you don't know. But me. I would say, or if he says something about my my mom, right? <laughs> that's because <laughs> oh, your mom. Yeah. T- that's because your mom taught you wrong, right? That's a pretty yeah. offensive, right? You're like, maybe what? that's you your talk culture, about my mom? <laughs> or maybe it's your culture or your or yeah, your, something. It or could your be anything. Background. It could be it anything. It could be anything because emotions they they can right. uh, pop up and any, anything. It depends right. on you. I mean, but, look, if they bring up something that's really inappropriate, you may want to rethink about whether you want that position or not. Right. right, so it doesn't matter if you have a good attitude. If it's just offensive and it's um, something that is um, uh, not right, uh, then you know you have every right to to say maybe look. I think this conversation is probably going in a in a bad direction. Yeah. Uh, but there's a professional way to say that. But if it's something light-hearted, like oh, you you know you're you're um, you're uh, I don't think you know what you're talking about. Right. I don't. Right. I don't think I. I don't think you know what you talk about. Oh, about that's so annoying. And then you could say this. You could say, "Look, I. I could be making a mistake. Um, let me check back. Whatever you know, whatever that was that you said to him. Let me check back on you. Um, even though you know that he's wrong, right? Even though you know that he's wrong, yeah. But I. I would. Yeah. I'm trying to. It's. I mean, it's difficult because those are the. Those are the situations where. Um, you're you can't step back yeah. and calm down you can't just walk away mm-hmm. um, or it's hard you know you you can you can walk away but you shouldn't walk away so you're you're in a position where you kind of have to just act and respond react yeah if for me if i hear those things um and i can clearly see there is no way <laughs> no way i can persuade him that i'm right or he, he's just, he thinks, um, for example, the, the world is flat and he just believes in it. And, you know, then I say, maybe you, you might be right. Oh, if, okay. Yeah, if, if he's so strong, he or she is so strong with that pun, opinion, right. just go along with it, but just don't fight over it at that moment in that interview. Yeah, I mean, don't nothing, I, I don't think anything is worth like <laughs> fighting physically or verbally over yeah. at a meeting. No, there's nothing, no, yeah. nothing out there. I mean, I would say even if he, you know, made fun of your ethnic background, there's nothing that requires that sort. You're not going to change his mind. Yeah. Uh, for that, you're not going to, you're not going to change the world if someone, you know, calls you a racial slur. I think the, the key is just to remain calm. I mean, that's what professional yeah, is. Remain calm. Right. Like, don't. It, it's if if that those things could be very sensitive. I right. feel like racial um, subjects. Then you you could can stand up and say, I don't think that's the right thing for you to say. But like, don't be so angry or right. upset <laughs> right. and like you don't know my country. You know, <laughs> something right. like that. I think yeah. I think we're going into a um, uh, a really extreme case, yeah. but it is true that you know in those moments where people are even yelling at you. I mean, I've had incidents where uh, you know res- a resident was yelling and, and screaming and, and, and abusive and um, abusive. I would say there's many reasons to yell, but this was a, a, I always say bordering abusive um, where we had to just walk away and say, look, um, we're, we, uh, we're not, um, I don't feel like, I don't feel comfortable talking to you when you're in this, in this uh, acting in this, uh, in this manner. Um, when you've calmed down, we'll, we'll talk together. Right. Or something like that, some, some effect. I forgot what they said, but, um, so it's better than yelling back at them yeah. and then, you know, mirror, mirroring their abusiveness, mm-hmm. abusive behavior, just makes you look bad too. So yeah, just keep calm, 
And I feel like you you should be able to handle those situations if you want to be a super, because you will meet different kinds of people. There are a lot of nice people, but there are some you know, rude people out there. So well, as a super, yeah. you should be able to embrace all kinds of different people. And yeah. maybe in the if you're in interview, they might be kind of watching you, how you can, uh, like if there's- How you board, react. Yeah, if there's the board member um, who's particularly um, picky right. or tricky, um, other board members might be seeing how you react to that. Sure, sure. They could, they're, they're testing you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, they're testing you. They're even, even if it's, they're not um, doing it on purpose, they're just watching you, how you react. Right. And how you um, talk to that person, how you deal with that person. So just, I know we talked about a lot of extreme cases, um, but I, I think you should be able to um, manage those situations. Yeah, absolutely. I think that, and, and you get better. I mean, mm -hmm. just there are moments that will test your your limits, and then uh, you make a mistake. It's okay. You know, if if you if you responded or reacted in a bad way, don't be hard on yourself. But just figure out what it was. Figure out how you can prevent that the next time, and then you've learned your lesson, mm -hmm. and you just move on. Uh, that's the that's the uh, game of of life. Um, right. But that's where a good attitude comes in. They're looking for a good attitude and all of that stuff. They want to make sure that you're not going to scare off the residents. You're not going to make fights with the residents that you're going to be able to work with the, with the board or with the manager or the, um, or the owner when things become difficult. So they're looking at all of these things. Um, the other part is, uh, you know, sometimes people won't pick you because you're not available um, at certain times. If you're, if the building needs emergency after hour service and you're far, you live far away from them, and you know that um, everyone knows that you won't be able to respond in time, and they'll, you know, this is important to them. That might you might have everything else right, except that, and that might cause you to not get the position. Uh, being organized, record keeping. We'll go through that part. That's an that's a, a really a area that's or an item that's rich with experience. Mm -hmm. How do you become organized or seem organized? How do you keep records? How do you yeah keep things in a certain order? Yeah, keep, keep things track. in orders. Keep track of things. Materials are important when Ma it comes keeping to track of materials and, yeah. and um, you can. If, if someone's organized, you can see, oh, it's going to be snow season in two, two months. Right. And you, you'll know that your part-time super is going to get ready with, your, with, with the salt. Right, right. And, and the shovel or whatever is needed. Organized, right. So that you actually hit upon a great point. We just had a really tough snow season. Right. Oh, it was a lot of snow. Part of that toughness was caused by... Uh, for some supers, is caused by a lack of preparation. Yeah, not being ready for this. Not being ready for it. Getting the, the snow blower ready the day of and finding out that it wasn't oh working. <laughs> and having, I'm, so, I'm sorry, I'm laughing now because uh, well, we did end up fi fixing it. But, um, you know, it was a surprise, right? We were, we were hit with a 12-inch uh, a snow fall and uh, you have a large area to cover with the snow blower. And... Uh, it didn't work and you would have found it out only if you had checked it three days earlier or a day or even a day earlier and you had a moment to prepare so exactly. being organized and getting those things ready and um you know they want to see if you're if you're able to keep track of also work that occurs in the building let's say a boiler person came in to fix a certain part um uh, whether you know you you're you're able to keep track of that that sort of work that goes on in the building. Um, so that's important. And I think uh, an honesty, integrity is, is a huge, uh, another big thing. If they can't feel that you're honest um, or they can't trust you, mm -hmm. I think, and I think that's, that's a little unfair because uh, it's definitely an important part of the interview where they're gauging 
they're gauging you by whether they they feel like they can trust you right right they feel they feel but it's always going by feel you can't um you know you can't really convey you can't really convey that you can convey technical knowledge by talking about how to do things yeah how you would do things you can communicate that's obvious if you're able to communicate well at the interview um you can talk about ways that you can be proactive and they'll be like oh my god i love this guy but honestly integrity and and whether you're trustworthy is really just feeling (laughs) yeah it's just feeling it's it's kind of part of you it's just part of you um and I, I, you know, I feel for those who are super trustworthy, super honest, um, but they don't come off as that. Yeah, I don't it could know be what the it is. Appearance could be um, the appearance. Yeah, a lot of factors. So, so that's why we talked about this in some of the other episodes, where just you know, wear wear clean clothes. Um, yeah, but Johnny, like the presentation, if, it's yeah. well, that would be professional. Yeah, but trustworthiness is is something that's different, and I. It's funny because as I'm, as I'm, you know, we're we're always doing that, you know, automatically as we talk to somebody, right? There's a there's a natural part of us that's like, is he trustworthy? Can I trust yeah. this stranger? Can yeah. I trust this person? He seems trustworthy, but is he? So there's so many, like, layers of, like, thinking that's going on here. So it's it's really hard to, um, it's really hard to pinpoint how to get this down, right? Or maybe we should say, if you're trustworthy, it'll come out. <laughs> if you're not, that'll I come mean, out. I mean, yeah, that's also true. They would say true colors will will show. For example, then what kind of questions would a manager ask to to test that? I don't know. See, that's the thing. I, I they, they. How do you trust a person that? Well, you trust develops over time. Yeah, like that's but why during like, an interview, that's if, you're, if you, you're meeting you, a new super yeah. or. It's just a short time to take a snapshot of someone's trustworthiness. But I think the most important thing here is they think honesty is a very important factor. Well, that's the the irony. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what I feel like what managers in a a very short interview, right? Or uh, just a few meetings, there are objective things that can kind of reflect that honesty, I guess, is by referrals, I think. Oh, interesting. Referrals. Oh, okay. Or asking asking your former em- yeah. employer. Um, even if you, you have never been a super, <laughs> she or he could call, call your former employer if you worked at, um, I don't know, McDonald's right. or auto shop. Um, they could ask for the manager oh we're interviewing this guy for a previous uh, position yeah. yeah yeah could you could you please tell me about him or her wow um, yeah this is yeah. yeah those those things so and if if someone calls to your former employer he uh he or she's going going to see if what you said in the interview matches with your former employers comments <laughs> so let's maybe in, in another episode <clears throat> we need to really focus on the questions that they'll ask you yeah what they're looking for when they ask those questions um the things that you need to prepare in advance yeah. especially if you are not, if you are a trustworthy person but you just interview horribly yeah you should prepare for that right. but but you're absolutely right i think um, the what we what we see now is that <clears throat> trustworthiness and this you sense they're uh, you know they're trying to get a, gain a sense of your trustworthiness at the interview and trustworthiness or your your reputation as trustworthy develops over time. It's not mm-hmm. like uh, something that one day you know it's something that it's your reputation. 
And so they'll be looking for that for sure yeah. at that short interview. Um, so the main way to communicate that <coughs> in, an in, in a short interview is to have your references ready. Yeah. And to say, these are the people that can vet me. Yeah. And, and even if they, the manager or the board member doesn't, doesn't contact, contact that uh, former, uh, the, those referrals, right. um, it's good to have it. It shows that you're, you're honest. Yeah, I, can, yeah. I can prove myself yep. that right. I'm being, being truthful. Right, right, right. <clears throat> That's true. <clears throat> Absolutely. That's, that's, uh, and I think most, I think that's what, that's the point of referrals yeah. or rec recommendations. Yeah, recommendations. So <coughs> even because, if, you, if you don't have anyone yeah. um, in your pool, you're, you're actually getting out of college or school um, and doing this job. If you know someone, um, who's a resident manager or right. who has been a super f uh, for a long time, ask them, um, if, can I have your recommendation? Right. Like, just uh, even if um, you, you didn't work for that person directly, um, I'll get, you can ask, um, could you, could you I, I'm doing this interview and would you be willing to be my recommendation or right, right. Um, referral just in case they call me you can uh, you can tell them what my personality right. and how, how you know me uh, that'll be really great and if you are a person who um, tries to think through who you can ask for a recommendation yeah and you don't have anybody, then you really should look into why you don't. I don't know what the reason is. Uh, right. I'm not going to go into that. But you should be able to pull out people who are able to vet you, mm -hmm. um, refer you to, to others, especially if you're in this trade. Mm -hmm. Because if you can't do that, then I don't know what it is. Maybe you're sh too shy to ask. Maybe you keep your accomplishments hidden. Or you don't, you don't, you know, you don't, um, uh, whatever it is, <clears throat> look deep into that reason and, and try to fix that. Mm -hmm. And then start to collect your uh, referrals, right. refer, uh, recommendations. Um, okay, so one last, I, I think one thing I think I did mention as part of the, part of the nine things on that list, but we didn't talk about is uh, consistency and reliability. That's two different things, right? Are they are they this, are they the same? Consistency and rely reliability. They're similar, but they, I think they refer to some of the different parts of being stable. Or you, can, you can be consistently unreliable. <laughs> Consistency is good, but you got to be rely consistently reliable. But reliably inconsistent. I mean, oh, could be. that could be too reliably inconsistent. Yeah, like you're <laughs> so inconsistent that <laughs> right. someone can rely on that <laughs> right. fact. So right? I think consistency and reliability can be separated. Yeah. So you you like everyone's now witnessing what we're going to put into the survey and how we're gonna we're gonna. <laughs> put this survey together and <laughs> how we're going to separate. Those things should be separate. I mean, in the list that I had, I had reliability and consistency. Yeah, I think reliability can be two different things, that you're trustworthy or you're competent. We didn't do competence. I did. Uh, did. Technical competence, technical knowledge. I had that. Oh, we talked about that? Yeah, technical knowledge. I guess technical competence or competence. Com competence means that you're able you're to do, or you're able to do the things that you're supposed to do in as a part-time super, right? Yeah. So you're competent in running, uh, making sure that the boiler is running. You're competent in making sure that you have, you troubleshoot, you're competent in knowing how to troubleshoot a yeah, problem. In other words, you know how to do things. Right, right. A it's board a doesn't have to teach you how to clean the sidewalk. Right. It doesn't have to teach you how to, how to recycle. 
right? I put that in together with technical knowledge. Yeah. Is that okay? Yeah, uh, I think that's the same thing. Okay. But going back to reliability, <laughs> being reliable, uh, I think it's more about trustworthiness. Ah, reliable. Okay, so you can put honest and reliable. Yeah, reliable. I think they're closer. Yeah. Than well, reliable consistent. means yeah. So consistent should be separated from reliable. So yeah, consistent, consistent and consistency is good. You don't want to be inconsistent, right? right? You may. It's better to be consistently unreliable <laughs> than inconsistently reliable. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. So we want to be. Uh, you definitely want consistency, right? Yeah, I you, think that's huge. By, by that means the board doesn't have to worry that one day um, you're gonna you're not gonna show up because you got so drunk at the bar last night. Right, right, or something happened and you just don't show up. Yeah, at least, yeah. And even if you call, let them know, let the board know beforehand. They don't want too many of those incidents. Exactly. They just want to make sure that this gets done right. every day, like clockwork. Yeah. Right. So. Or at least they can expect right. that you're going to be at the building at, at, I don't know, between three to six. Right, right. Um, but you're sometimes you're there in, in the weekends, right. <laughs> sometimes you're there on Mondays after midnight. It's just, you know, some sort of. Um, schedule or some sort of routine right. that they can expect that super is going to be there. I know it's a part-time job, but still you have have to be at least uh, be being able to be expected. Right. Right. You able to have to meet expectations. Yeah. And, well, expectations and being able to someone be, being able to expect you at a building, I think it's a, right. it's a little different. Right, right, and right. It, and the nuance is different, but yeah. Okay. It's not all over the place. Right, not all over the place. What about communication? I thought there was communication. There was, yeah, there is communication. Do we talk about communication? Uh, yeah. <coughs> so communication is, uh, is very important also. Being able to speak clearly and being able to uh, put thoughts together, put your thoughts together in a way that makes sense uh, <laughs> is, is super important. Because sometimes people don't. People, you know, sometimes people get nervous, like myself, and we end up blabbering. And yeah. we, we may seem like we're saying things that are, that make sense, but to the other person, I they're know. like, what's your point? What are you talking about? <laughs> What is this guy saying? Right. So it's not about the language you speak or what's your primary language or secondary language. It's just about being able to put your thoughts together and communicate them properly. And just be clear. Just be clear. And that's that I think is is an important thing. So it'll be really cool to see what managers, building managers and possibly board members um, think about this list and what they put as a priority. Mm -hmm. You know, to see what's most important to them, right. the top three of this list. And once again, I, you know, I pulled up, I made a mistake. I pulled up, I have, I have one clean version and one uh, um, draft uh, list of all these things. And I pulled up my draft list. Mm -hmm. But what I'll do for the next time, I'll clean this up. I'll send that off to the managers, the building managers and the, and the board members. Um, and then we'll have the results. Mm -hmm. And we'll, hopefully we can get um, a building manager, some, someone that we sent this list to, the survey to, on the podcast so that we can get his or her feedback mm -hmm. on uh, why she chose what she chose. Thank you very much, Jennifer. Yeah, we, we, we talked about a lot of stuff today. Did we miss anything? Um, I don't think so. but. Uh, I think this is just generally what they would be thinking about, focusing on. Yeah, yeah. I mean, at least we, we kind of showed uh, how there could be different sides to this word, to these words. Yeah. So what we'll do is we'll send this out 
and then we'll um, we'll sh you know we'll see what their thoughts are. Yeah, we'll show you the the results on the next episode, mm -hmm. and hopefully we'll have a guest manager. Yeah, who to can talk help. about. Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll help us confirm mm -hmm. everything that we talked about today. All right. All right. Sounds good. Okay, take care, Jennifer. See you next time. <laughs>